For folks just coming in, we'll start in just a minute, but um, we're starting a uh, Slido. So if you just go to slido.com and use the code GDD-analytics, um, the first question is on there. Feel free to put in your uh, response and we'll probably get started in just like one minute, maybe at 103 Eastern, 1003 Pacific. The question is, I feel confident about using your analytics for my team. One being not confident and five being very confident. We'll also take a, take a moment to just uh, just apologize in advance. If you hear a dog barking, it's my dog. It'll sound loud and scary. She's very friendly, but sometimes she likes to let me know when other dogs walk by the house. So it's a friendly heads up. <clears throat> All right, so we got 13 responses. Not bad. Um, and it looks like <clears throat> majority of us are kind of right in the middle. Um, and then otherwise there's a, a fairly even spread. Some of us feeling really confident, which is great. Um, I'm gonna switch over to the next to the next slide, which is gonna be another question about analytics, which asks us on average, I utilize Guru Analytics and then it's giving you some different times per month. Zero, one to two, three to five, or five or more. And if it's zero, awesome. And for you, if it's like 10 or 15 or a bunch more, then um, sorry we didn't capture that, but then it's easy for you to choose more than five times per month. Part of the reason that um, I like to start with these, these, uh, these polls is so that you can get a sense for where folks are at on the call, and hopefully it'll demonstrate that we're all at different parts of our guru journey, uh, depending on the feature. And um, if you are in there a lot, great. And if you're not, that's cool too. That's that's why we're here today to try to learn some new some new info and um, use analytics for our team. All right, so majority of us, three to five times per month. Um, that feels pretty pretty decent, almost like once a week you're popping in there to, to, to check some stuff out. And then there's some varying results uh, underneath that. Well, um, <clears throat> I wanna get into the presentation here. So thanks for giving, um, giving some, uh, some background on how you use analytics to get us started. Um, and, um, oh, I just missed one. I just missed one as it came in. Let's see. Ah, now we're even. So three to five or five or more, awesome. Um, <clears throat> if this is your first Guru Deep Dive, um, my name is Imtiaz Alam. I am the instructional designer here at Guru. I'm responsible for these sessions, the Guru Deep Dives, and also for the Guru Academy. If you haven't checked it out, it's academy.getguru.com. Um, and we are here to teach you about new Guru features. You're gonna hear about a Guru on Guru story, and you're also gonna hear from a customer. So we're really excited um, to, to have this analytics session today. Um, and at the end, you're gonna be able to discuss how you use the feature as well. So here's our, our schedule. I'll go over an overview and a functional demo of analytics. Um, Chandler Sopko, our product marketing manager, she just waved, hi Chandler. Um, she's gonna give um, what we call the guru on guru story or example. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, just so everyone knows, guru on guru is what we call our own usage of guru. So we do have um, an instance that we use a ton. 
Um, and then we're so delighted to have our customers showcase. We are featuring search discovery today. We have Kelvi Tyus and Andy Smelzer, who uh, there, I think I just saw them wave. Hi guys, um, uh, who are gonna share their insights um, on how they use Guru Analytics and beyond. Um, and Search Discovery is a data transformation company. And so it'd be really cool to uh, see what they have to say. And Chandler and I got a sneak peek. And so we know that you guys are in for, for a treat there. And then at the end, we'll have some time to discuss. So please, just as a reminder, keep your videos on. Um, you know, when, when, when that time comes, share your questions, share your insights, give us your comments and feedback. Um, it might seem like a silly question to you, but it might be something really important in someone else's mind. So just like you saw from the polls, everyone's at a different point in their journey. So feel free to ask questions at the end and, and really get the most out of this session because that's how Guru Deep Dive started. Folks were asking, how do other customers use Guru? So here we are. Um, before we get into the content, there's a couple of links that I want to um, throw out to you. Uh, if you haven't joined the Guru community on Slack, feel free to do that. Uh, it's an awesome place, tons of awesome channels um, for you to maximize your Guru experience. Um, there is Remotathon events that are still happening. We have one more later this week and Chandler will be on that call as well. Um, and then we have Guru the Gathering happening on August 26th featuring Brooke Linden, Carolyn Svensson, the Training and Knowledge Manager. Um, will be there uh, to give us her take. And then our next Guru Deep Dive is gonna be in about a month. It's gonna be on knowledge governance groups. Um, and it'll be with Maven Link um, and one of our CSMs, uh, Ethan Simon. So we're really pumped for that as well. Um, I think that Chandler is throwing those in the chat. Yeah, thanks Chandler. Um, and so feel free to check those out, um, register for the ones that make sense for you. All right. <clears throat> When you RSVP'd, some folks ask questions and we wanna make sure that you're feeling heard and that we can tweak our presentation to make sure that it's really relevant for you. So that's what these questions were. We just copied and pasted them here. I'm not gonna read them, but take a second and browse them and you can see what was on your peers' minds. They're thinking about ROI, they're thinking about support, they're thinking about um, tracking impact, um, making improvements and, and probably things that are on your mind as well. So again, um, we're all at different parts of our journey here, but there's gonna be some common threads that I think um, will resonate with you. Let's get into it. So how do we define analytics at Guru? It's essentially tracking your team's usage over a selected time period. Um, and it's really important to point out that, um, or what a guru, a guru monthly active user is. This is in your instance on the dashboard, but it's essentially the number of users or, or proportion of users who performed what we call an active event, like a card view, copy, search, verify, edit. Um, and then you can also specify the time period um, a number of users um, using our filter, which we'll talk about as well. So one of the ways, one of the items, questions, and ways we know you can look at your, your Guru instance is through what adoption looks like. And a lot of folks will use adoption as a way to say, hey, you know, Guru is worthwhile for this reason. This is how we present maybe a piece of our ROI by looking at overall and a big over, big overview of, of what adoption looks like. So when you're on the dashboard, and I'll get there in just a minute, um, you can see what this looks like. It's essentially just your total number of users in Guru compared to the total number of monthly active users, which is that definition I just gave you. Um, and so this can be a really great way to see what um, adoption looks like over time. Your trust score over time is essentially um, just showing you what your percentage of trusted cards are, ones that are verified, versus the percentage of untrusted cards, um, cards that are not verified. And so um, this can be a really cool way to see what the fluctuation looks like. Maybe there's some patterns happening there. Maybe someone who is a big author um, made a bunch of cards and set a you know, three month interval. And then you know three months came around and you saw that dip happening every three months. And you were like, oh, it's because those folks have all their stuff that needs to be verified on the same day. Um, you can start to look into some patterns like that. It can be really helpful. Um, Another section is searches producing results. This is how your team will be searching for content and you can see what is producing the most results. It can be a really, really good, <clears throat> good way to tailor what you want to title a card and what you want to tag a card um, as those are two really great places for real estate to be like, okay, this is the search term I wanna use. So this can be some really helpful, really impactful for you and your authors um, when, when you're seeing what's successful for your team. Um, 
Then on the flip side of that, you're going to have searches, searches that are producing no results, um, which is also, I think, equally important. So it might be like, oh, hey, well, why would I care about looking at what's not working? Um, perhaps you're seeing some common threads, like over here on the right in this picture, you can see like stipend is going to come up four times and you're wondering like, hey, how come, why are people searching for that, right? Maybe we need some content in Guru to help us with that. You can start to draw some of those insights. Um, that'll be really, really important and helpful for your team. There's one caveat here in number two, that searches within boards will also populate here. So you'll see a search term, like for example, in our Guru instance, um, Microsoft is one that came up. Um, someone did that search within a board and it didn't produce any results. But we know that we have like a bunch of cards and knowledge on Microsoft um, that, that is that's appearing in cards. But because it was a search within a board, it, it's saying that it didn't produce any results. So don't be alarmed. Don't freak out if that happens. Um, that is almost likely exactly what is happening if you're seeing that like, oh, hey, this is a really common term we know we have. Um, so you can also drill down into see what, what that looks like here. Um, <clears throat> looking at usage by user can be really helpful. So you're gonna be able to drill down into specific people, which will be really helpful. Um, we, we essentially say and it might be common sense, but if you have high usage for, for your users, it's, it's gonna relate to a stronger team. Um, trust scores are gonna be higher, verification is gonna be better. Um, you can also see the user view tab, um, which we'll see again in a minute here. Um, if you click on a user and then looking, uh, clicking on the three ellipses, you can kind of do a drill down, get some awesome insights into what they're doing. Should be really helpful. And then reports, which um, I think are really an awesome part of our analytics. You can schedule reports to be sent. You can um, run them um, right, right away um, and have that, have that content um, right there for you in the moment. Um, and then you can adjust filters to make the reports. And so filters are a huge part of the analytics. We're going to be looking at that like in just a second. And so um, hopefully that's something we can become really familiar with um, to make sure that you can prove out, um, you know, whatever the goal is that you're looking for. So if I want to jump into the Guru HQ instance here, and I first want to click on the analytics tab, and I can see across the top, there's a bunch of different tabs. Um, and I kind of went through what some of those were in my slides. Um, but for now, let's just say we're on the overview page here. And I see adoption, trust score, searches producing results, and searches producing no results. Those are those items that you just saw me go over. Now, how can I manipulate them? How can I make sure that they're really valuable for me? I can click on the filters button and specify the date in a ton of different ways, right? So let's say I wanted to know a range and I was choosing um, beginning of August until right now. And I do a collection and I can also include or exclude collections here. And when I click right here, Guru will start thinking and say, all right, you wanna look for your collections. Um, so let's say I chose marketing. For, and then I could also select multiple collections here as well. And I could also add a, hit the plus button over here and start to do some different, uh, different filtering as well. So you can get real, you can drill down really far into these. Um, let's say my group again is gonna be something in the marketing team like growth marketing and source application, I can include or exclude. <clears throat> and you're gonna see here API extension web app Slack, um, which will be really helpful for you if you wanna know how folks are or where they're getting their content from. And once I hit run, I can, I'll, get a, um, I'll get the updated content right away, right? Now, if I click on the gear here, this is where you can start to see some of the, the takeaways. You can download this report as a PDF. You can download it as CSV. You can send it right away. So let's say I knew this report is like something that someone in my team or organization is looking for. I can give it a title, put the email address in here, the format I want, um, and send it off. There's an attachment via email. And then I could also schedule it, which I really think is a cool feature. Um, I can give this schedule, this schedule a name, put the recipients on it, and then have it as an, uh, an interval um, or an update, and then specify how often I want this to be sent, which I find to be really helpful. And you could also just send these to yourself, which might be a good tip. Like you go through this once, I found the filtering that I really like, and I'm just going to send this report to myself, you know, every week or something like that to see what this looks like. 
So um, as I go across the top of the tabs here, I got knowledge, user, um, performance, and you'll notice that our Guru HQ instance has a few extras that you might not have, um, and I don't want to confuse you with those, but publishing is like for our help center analytics um, for our support team, and then sales and sales, sales engagement and activity will show up only if you have content performance turned on. If you have questions about some of these other tabs, um, then definitely hit me up or hit Chandler up. Um, or hit us up in the community and we can kind of dive into that. But I think for the sake of the group and moving things forward, um, we're going we're gonna, to uh, glean over that for a moment. And um, actually, as, a, as we say that, um, I would love to kick it over to Chandler in a minute, but I want to make sure that there aren't any questions that are popping up in the uh, Slido Q&A. So that can be something that we're using throughout. Sorry if I didn't mention that, although I see some happening here. Um, <clears throat> and let's see. Is there a way to view top verifiers beyond the top three listed within a collection? Um, and then are there any plans to explore identifying SPNR that were searched in a board versus top search bar across all collections you have access to? Um, and then can you send a CSV to Google Sheets directly? Um, <clears throat> I don't believe that you can send the CSV file to Google Sheets directly. Um, I think that's gonna be a copy paste if I'm not mistaken. So I think that's probably the easiest, the quickest one to answer. Um, and when it comes to the first question, which says, is there a way to view top verifiers beyond the top, beyond the top three listed within a collection? Um, I believe there is, and, and we might need to run through like what that example looks like. And um, that is gonna be something that if it's okay, we might try to address towards the end. Um, and then the second question, are there any plans to explore identifying SPNR that were searched in a board versus top search bar? Um, and Chandler, I don't want to put you on the spot, but that sounds like it might be like a question about what we're doing in the future and you might be better suited to answer that. Um, but if not, then we can figure it out after. Let's see. Um, yeah, I might have to follow up with that one, um, but I may have an answer to the top verifiers question, um, which I'm not sure if you can do within analytics, but I think within card manager, that's something that you can drill down into. Yes, Chandler, you're right. You can't do that through card manager. Yeah, card manager sometimes is a is a trick that you can use, um, but we'll have to we'll have to follow up on the second question. Cool. Um, and the card manager um, is a deep dive that we want to have actually in a couple months, so that's exciting. Um, okay, so I've been talking quite too much. Um, I would love to kick it over to Chandler so she can give us our guru on guru story. 